Hey friends, so today we're gonna be looking at a way to merge Glassmorphism and Aurora UI gradients. So we're gonna be making something pretty simple and not really that useful, but it's more to actually get a hang of how Glassmorphism and Aurora work so you can use it in your projects for real. This time I'm gonna be using Sketch. So if you're a Figma user, you can still follow along. The main difference between Sketch and Figma in projects like this is how masking works but I'll try to do it in Sketch, but in a way that's compatible with Figma. And if you haven't, follow us on Instagram, because we post tutorials and daily explorations there that you can follow along and that are quite easy to make. So as usual, start with creating an empty artboard and then create a rectangle on it. And you can get the proper proportions of a credit card from an image, or you can just estimate and just create something that kind of resembles the shape of a credit card. Then of course, round the corners. Then fill it with a radial gradient that starts in one of the corners and goes towards the opposite corner diagonally. And then pick one of the corners to be fully transparent and the other one to be just a little bit transparent. And don't worry, you'll be able to modify the colors at any point, so just pick ones that feel right. Now let's go to the borders and create a radial gradient in the opposite direction and make it white on every side of it and then create one more point in the very middle and make it white as well. Now the middle point should be completely transparent, so set the opacity to 0%, and then the other two points should be slightly transparent, but you can modify this later as well. I'm gonna set it to 80 just for now. Make sure that the border is also inside, not centered on the shape, and change the blending mode to overlay and the stroke width to at least 2. And because that border is pretty much invisible, I'm just gonna create a rectangle in the background and fill it with some light blue. Now using the pen tool, let's create a simple shape going through the middle of our card. And that shape can be pretty much anything, so it can be more complex or it can be just a simple wavy line. But I'm gonna stick with like this little swirl here. And I'm gonna fill it with a diagonal gradient that's a little bit harder than the colors in our original gradient in the background of the card, but this time they're not gonna be transparent. Normally in Sketch just one shape for a mask is enough, but if you're using Figma, duplicate the initial card and then mask your new shape with that card shape. Now blur that shape, set the blending mode to overlay for the fill, and then you can modify the colors of the fill a little bit so it blends in with the background better. There is no proper way of doing this, so whatever works, it's fine. Like in this case, I'm duplicating that shape and making it bigger, so my blur and my gradient is actually looking a little bit more organic. But you don't have to do it this way. In the Instagram version of this tutorial, we used the noise layer for the frosted glass effect, but here let's try something different. So I'm gonna modify the fill to be an image fill, and then by default we have this nice checkerboard here. So change it to tile image and then decrease the size until it's barely visible. And once again set the blending mode to overlay. It's gonna make it blend with the background a little bit better. And you can also decrease the opacity of that fill, because we don't really want the effect to be super prominent. We want it just to be slightly visible to make it a little bit more interesting. Now group your card if you need to and add a subtle shadow to the main card shape. And while in general in user interfaces you should avoid shadows that go onto the x-axis and only use the y-axis, for illustrations like this you can use the x-axis freely. Okay, now let's add some text onto the credit card. So it's gonna be the credit card title, a name, an expiration date, and a credit card number. And obviously that's not a real number and you should never put your real credit card number on designs like that. Just saying. To create the card issuer logo, I simply make two circles and everybody knows what company that is. And then just copy the style of the initial card shape onto those circles. That should look pretty nice in itself. Now for the fonts on the card, to make it look good, try to use a maximum of two fonts. So the card number can be a slightly larger font, but use the same style font for all the other text. And once you have the text in, you can play around with the background shapes and all the blurs to actually make it stand out a little bit more, because you're able to see how the text works against the background now. And if you like, you can also try having an inner shadow with a heavy blur and an overlay blending mode, just to see how that looks. Now, to make the text pop a little bit from the card, add a subtle shadow to all the fonts as well, and try to use a color that's already there, but just modify it a little bit to match the space where the text actually is. So in my case, it's a little bit more blue. Just make sure that the shadow is like barely visible, so it's not supposed to be super strong. 
Now duplicate the entire card and move it so one overlaps the other and you can pick the position that you like best. Now add a background blur to the shape of the first credit card so the card in the background is nice and blurry. And adjust the blur so anything from the background is actually visible. And at this point when you see the full effect in action you can play with some blurs and some colors so you can desaturate it like in my case I'm gonna make it a little bit softer and a little bit more glassy than colorful. Alright, now let's use the awesome power of Aurora Gradient to create a more interesting background. So I'm just drawing a circle and choosing a light blue color from our color palette. Make sure that our new circle is under the cards on the layer list, then blur it heavily, move it around, play around with the opacity, the size and the position. Then you can duplicate that blurred shape, move it to some other side and choose a slightly different hue, like in our case a little bit more pink, and then blur it again. And of course when you add the new background, you can also play around with the background of our cards so it all matches together nicely. Now simply rotate one of the cards to make it a little bit more interesting and then using the mask technique from the chat bubble tutorial, you can create a blurry shadow between the cards so that's gonna make it look a little bit more natural. So it's just a desaturated blue shape with a heavy blur and decreased opacity. And you can play around with the background colors as well, so just duplicate one of the shapes and change its color and move it around. And I'm gonna also decrease the opacity of our circles logo to like 50 or 40% so it's gonna blend in with the card a little bit better as well. Now all of this is of course completely optional, but you can modify the blurred shape on the card by creating a circle inside the mask and picking one of the colors that's already on the card, then blurring it and playing around with the opacity and the blending mode, of course, overlay for the win. And just for fun, I'm gonna create another shape with the path tool. So this time it's gonna be another swirl in the other direction and I'm gonna fill it with white, blur it and then decrease the opacity. So as you can see, it's all about experimenting. So add some new shapes, blur them, play around with their opacity and their blending mode just to see what feels right. Let's make one of those cards a debit card so it's not gonna look like it's just a duplicate. Now, once we have the structure of everything, play around with the alignment. So I'm just gonna create a square from the left edge to the credit card text and then I'm gonna see if everything else is the same distance from the edge. And if not, then let's just adjust it. And as I said, don't be afraid to experiment. So if you don't like any particular object like that shadow here, you can modify it at any point. So just modify the color, the blur, the distance from the card, anything that you feel that is gonna make it look better. And there you have it, a nice imitation of a glass card using glass morphism, but with that Aurora UI organic look and feel that's gonna make it look a little bit more natural. Alright, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and if you liked the video, don't forget to like, subscribe and share it so more people can see it. Cheers, guys.